a shopping day with the boo. But first, coffee, bro. Coffee, my headache is banning. But first, coffee. Coffee. I feel like a like, Starbucks white girl. Could I get one large caramel macchiato with soy? London City, the home of dreamers and schemers. My birthplace used to motivate me more than any other place in the world. You walk around this huge city and see the full spectrum of the mega rich to the dirt poor. I used to take the train from Finsbury Park to Bond Street to get to my job at a restaurant next to Selfridges. I remember the stark contrast between the grim hopelessness you'd see in Finsbury Park compared to the lavish luxury in central London. The Rolls Royces, the G63s, the designer clothes and the smell of expensive cologne. It was addicting and motivating. The idea that I can come from nothing and become someone of status and luxury gave me a shining light at the end of the tunnel. But I didn't understand at the time that that mindset would send me on a path of crippling anxiety and mild depression. You see, there's two kinds of motivation that propels people to do things. There are intrinsic reasons and extrinsic reasons. Intrinsic reasoning comes from a place of soul. It's when you do something because you love it, even if you don't get anything out of it. For example, if someone loves to draw and spends time perfecting their craft simply because it puts them in a flow state, their reason for doing so is intrinsic. Think back to what you love to do as a child as an example. Now say another person takes up drawing to make money or to impress someone they like. That would be an extrinsic reason reason because it's to fulfill something outside of themselves. If you look at your life, you'll find we are all animated by a complex mix of both intrinsic and extrinsic motives. But on this particular day of shopping in London, I had a realization about why a lot of us in cities are so damn miserable all the time. The answer lies in our culture and our adoption of the materialist paradigm. I'll explain later in the video, but first, here's me talking shit in Ragamama and shopping. <laughs> I'm gonna tell them why we're here. I'm gonna tell them what we're actually doing. We're going to be material girls. We're going shopping for St. Lucia. For where? St. Lucia. What? For where? St. Lucia. St. Lucia. Garçon. Nah, fuck that. I want to eat, bro. What do you want? You want to eat first. You want yeah. the bag of mama? Yeah, but I'm saying you want to eat first, yeah? Yeah. Because I'm hungry, man, but like. I'm not, I'm not debating it. I'm just asking you. But do you think. I'm going Primark and it's just like. Oh, can we go? Oh, oh, I fucking hate this. Oh. No, the reason why is because we have no plan, we have no set yeah, tactics. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Even... Let's go to eat and settle. Yeah. Settle, you know. It's like getting to, the, getting to the pace of things. Yeah. Because you know this, this Westfield come, uh, place ain't really for us like that. It's actually not for us. Really not for us. I don't think Westfield is for anyone. Other Westfield than like 15 year old girls coming to get man. And Remember man. how gas we used to be coming here like as youngers? It was always a motive, just like Westfield, Westfield. Guys, you know I used to work in Wagamama, innit? it? You know, it was some of the most depressing times in my life. Is it? I swear down, bro. Like, Rosewood, Sainsbury's, or Wagamama? No, nah, Sainsbury's takes the cake still. <laughs> no, because at least with this one, I was getting tips. I knew how to speak to people and shit. Mm, to be fair, even though they look down on you quite a lot because you're a waiter, like because I was in central London where all the rich yeah, people Yeah, you were next were, to Selfridges. Next to Selfridges and shit. People were just looking at me like, oh, Lord, look at this dickhead. You know who I served once? You know, um, I can't remember his name. You know the guy that does all the boxing shit on Instagram, the, rap, the manager of all those rappers? What's his no. name, man? Oh, no, he's not even that famous. <laughs> was he calm? Huh? Was he calm when you served him? Yeah, he was blessed. He was blessed. But like, all the rappers and like footballers and people were always seemed to be like all right with me. It was always the people that I don't know. Probably like, they were like from Dubai and shit, and they used to come to London in the summer. Mm -hmm. Bro, they used to come with their G63 like big Mercedes trucks, mm -hmm. and they always used to make a fat mess on the tables, bro. It was mm -hmm. always them, mm -hmm. like a different class of people. You just know that they've never look, looked after themselves in their lives. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Should I just be like your full term cameraman? So you're going to be the creative director of Kaizen Clothing and also my cameraman. Alright, let me just marry you now. That's right. Let me just. Junaid, if you get on one knee right now, I swear to God I'll slap you up. Can you imagine if everyone starts looking? Oh, Wagamama, are you dumb? 
Swagger Mama in right, Stratford, in Stratford, <laughs> Westfield. Nah. Oh, imagine getting proposed to a Stratty, bro. Straight. No. She's so excited to go to St. Lucia. No, same, honestly. Honestly, I cannot fucking wait. I can't wait for everything. I was gonna so keep it. To I was come. gonna keep it a surprise, like on the vlog, until I'm just literally going. But by the time yeah. this vlog comes out, yeah, we'll be we there. We gonna be there, bro. <clears throat> when our friends you. come, when Rashem and Charlie come, it's gonna be so fucking lit. I can't. Like honestly, the day I'm looking forward to the most is Sulphur Springs, but also just getting fucked up and going on that water thing. It's gonna be the best thing in life. Like honestly, I'm gonna be so waved. There's like a mini. There's like a mini obstacle. It's like total wipeout. Yeah. <laughs> Like, you know, when you're just jumping and like do the like obstacle course, it's so fucking fun. I love so that shit. Fun, fun. Especially when you're drunk. Oh my god. But think about it. I yeah. can't wait. Like, ever since we've come back from St. Lucia, what kind of like physical fun activity have we been doing? None. Fun activity, nothing. Other, other than, than gym. gym. Gym ain't fun, bro. You're just breathing in farts and just, and just touching like, up sweaty machines, bro. Sweat, yeah, and just you just sweating. feel like such a rat. rat. Like, why are you just. Walk you know what I mean? Like a you just, literal rat, like, like a Like, no, rat. like a hamster on a, on a, on a on wheel. On a treadmill, like, yeah. so fake. I fucking hate shopping. Like, I always underestimate how much I hate shopping. Excuse me. I feel like I'm so hot. And look, I don't like complaining when I'm out. Like, I just like to soak in the journey as I go along. But fucking yeah, hell. That's so cute. Oh, baby, that's so cute, honestly. Alright, what are you looking for now, babe? More stuff to go up your ass. What did he say? Hey. Oh, stop. Stop. I'm going to do a video where I try to spend 24 hours without saying one thing negative. Like, I keep clocking myself just just going i hate it here i hate it here i hate we're not having a baby babe we're not gonna have a baby but oh we're having a baby guys oh my god i wanted to have lakers Let's put a light-skinned baby in the lakers top okay this is about holiday not babies let's go <laughs> hey just coming out of primark i said to the cashier make sure you give me the receipt so i can shove it in the security guard's mouth you never see the cashier laugh at laugh Hey, we need to go to Holland and Barrett, bro. I need to get my, my magnesium pills. <laughs> no, seriously, bro. It's nature's chill pill. We need to get some magnesium. My nature's chill pill is bud. This one? Uh, yeah, give me that one, the ultra magnesium. Let me see it. Hmm. We're currently in the art shop, just picking up some art supplies for St. Lucia because you already know that she's going on her own journey. I'm going on my writing journey. She's going on her art journey. So you just kind of have to buy the whole art shop just full of pencils and pastels and all sorts. I guess everyone has their own creative process, isn't it? What are you looking at now? These ones. Okay, Fucking hell. How much is that? I'm gonna vomit. 36 pounds. <laughs> Look, 39 pounds. This is exactly the reason why I hate shopping. Just because I see the, this one's right. see the incremental... £90. This one's alright, £90. <laughs> Again, this is why I hate shopping. I just see the incremental balances just be coming out of my account bit by bit until it hits zero. It's a bit of a shit ones. feeling. My motherfucking bank account is screaming, but it's okay. Abundance. Abundance at all times. Alright, shopping over. Now it's time to reward ourselves with some ice cream. Uh, what flavour should we get? I can't see the flavour. Oh, I can only see the macarons, Morty. Thank you. Ah, cheers. Sorry. <laughs> Me, bro? What, is it too much? Hell no, bro. That's like a whole tub of ice cream. Like, I'd take that shit home, put foil on it and freeze it. Now, before I go on, I want to start off by saying cities can be amazing places filled with rich cultures from all over the world. The different tastes, smells and traditions you experience helps you foster an appreciation towards other people's ways of life. I will always hold a deep love in my heart for London since it's where I grew and experienced some of the best times and worst times of my life. But now, I'm starting to question, 
Why are most people here so sad? We're so abundant. Anything you could possibly ever want is readily accessible. Opportunities, products, services, it's all here. But now I, I think I understand. From the moment you were born, you're immersed into a machine that is designed to get you to neglect what is important about life. We're programmed to live through our extrinsic motivations. We all know the typical route of a law-abiding citizen. We're told it's very important to get good grades in school so we can go to a good university that will get us a good job so we can make good money. Do you see a pattern here? We've developed the materialist paradigm, the belief that without money and material possession, we are less. We've been led to believe life isn't worth living without material success or gain. It leads most of us in the city to be driven by our extrinsic motivation and junk values, such as buying new things just to invoke jealousy in other people that you don't even like, or working extra long hours at the job you hate to make more money. For thousands of years, philosophers have warned that if you think life is about getting money and status and showing it off, you will become deeply unhappy and manifest depression and severe anxiety in your life. But is that really true? Well, in the 1980s, a social scientist named Professor Tim Kasser set out to test whether such traditional wisdom could survive scientific scrutiny. In short, Kasser discovered that the more you're driven by extrinsic values, the more your intrinsic values are starved, and so the more likely you are to become depressed and anxious. He found that people whose lives were dominated by extrinsic values felt sicker, they were angrier, they experienced less joy and more despair, they had worse relationships and they were more insecure. Does this sound familiar? Now, how can we fix this? What's the cure? It's simple, intrinsic motivation. The way to escape the materialist paradigm is to ask yourself, what are moments in my life when I have felt truly satisfied and in a flow state? It could be a range of answers, but write them down and find a way to build more of that into your life and less of those junk values like chasing money, fame, or material success. I guarantee you, your soul's passion will fill your cup like nothing else. Nevertheless, just like junk food looks like food but doesn't meet our underlying nutritional needs, Junk values don't meet our underlying psychological needs to have meaning and connection in our lives. Extrinsic values are like KFC for the soul, yet our culture constantly pushes us to live extrinsically. Why, you may ask? It could be human nature. It could be the elites manipulating us into submission. No matter what the cause, the power lies in you to free your mind and start to live through what you love. So I'm leaving the city. I'm so you're doing a 420 art yeah, piece? Yeah, the, the snake hasn't got anything to do with 420. I just thought the shit was cool, but... Oh, what, that's a snake? Don't you see it? Oh, shit. That yeah. is so cool. And then I'm going to do, like... I don't know yet, but I'm doing my frog again because that's like my main part. The guy, bro. Yeah, the frog from frog. this... From this... From this... This little fella. This dude. Yeah, that's my guy. Ah, oh, man. Can't wait to see it.